Cheers. I do buckaroos. How the heck are you? I am Sunday Beer Whisperer. Uh, happy Labor Day. I got some Alejandro Escobedo in the background. I got my smoker going. Hey, man, it's Labor Day. <laughs> <laughs> Smoker's got to go, man. I hadn't used my smoker in quite a while, and I finally got it fired up this weekend. Uh, uh, just just circumstances, right? Sometimes circumstances work against you. But I was able to get it going yesterday. Bought some good meat from Schubman uh, Meat Market. Hold on a second. <laughs> the hazards of outside. So anyway, there's two beers I'm going to get to real quick. Decided to visit a, a classic, right? Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness, uh, the hazards, the hazards. I took my allergy medicine, but damn, it is tearing me up. <laughs> a classic Mickey's. I haven't had one in a while. I figured what the hell. Is it a great beer? No, but I mean, it, I, I think it falls under that category. Well, it is what it is, man. It's not trying to be something else. It's not pretentious. It is what it is. It's that friend you have that's a little rough around the edges, but he's your friend, so you don't give a rat's ass what your friends think, what your other friends think. <laughs> he's your friend. Fuck them if they don't get it. And that's what this beer is. It's that friend, that rough around the edges friend. Some might... uh. Uh, some might imply that I am that friend to most of my friends. I'm that friend that's a little rough around the edges, but you know what you're going to get. <laughs> uh, shit, a biscuit. You, you can't taste corn syrup. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you and tell you it's some great beer. But yeah, you know, sometimes it just kind of hits the spot when you want this you know, particular flavor. For me, it's usually more about a memory in all honesty. Uh, I also decided to, to pull out the uh, Boulevard Tip Your Cat Baseball Beer as I'm fighting to sneeze here. 4.7%. Damn. But it only runs about eight bucks a six pack. So I mean, it was 7.98. Which, uh, where I bought it from, it was 70 cents more a six-pack than the King of Beers. So, no, I'm not ever buying the King of Beers when I can pay 70 cents more and buy this. <laughs> How about that? Uh, great song. Uh, I put on a mix. I've been really... You know, everyone's... I, I, I can be a little obsessive sometimes. I find artists and I, I hear one song and... Then all of a sudden, I need to know everything about him. I was like that with Lucero when I first uh, found Lucero, and then Chuck Prophet as well. And now, now it's uh, Alejandro Escovedo. Just there's one song I heard, and it made me really delve into his discography and find certain tunes. Uh, Five Hearts Breaking. This song. Um, the, the song I found was a, a, a new song from him, uh, Outlaw For You, and it made me want to find other tunes. Then I found uh, some of his older stuff, like uh, Shave the Cat, which is just brilliant. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's, it's funny, though. He's an interesting artist. Uh, his music style, you might find some country elements, some blues elements. Uh, lyrically, he goes from, from poignant to irreverence, uh, uh, seemingly seamlessly. And you can't even you can't even make that connection uh, from album to album. It's more or song to song. Each album on, on one album, you're gonna find elements of, of this genre and that genre. Uh, there's not one album isn't one specific way. It's very hard to categorize. Very eclectic sound. Again, much like artists like Chuck Prophet, for instance. They're really hard to put in a box in, in one specific genre, musically or lyrically. I mean, Chuck Prophet's the same way. The songs go from poignant to irreverent, you know, from track to track. <laughs> you just not know what you're going to get. But I, I, I'm really becoming a big fan of Mr. Escovedo here. Been listening to a lot of his stuff this weekend. Anyway, cheers, guys. Oh.
Now, will I be able to tell the difference here? Well, let's find out. I believe, if I remember correctly, I think this uses some honey malt. Yeah, it, yeah, again, yeah, it, it's, it's just a much cleaner beer. Uh, it, it is done in conjunction well, a boulevard, but tip your cap was was kind of a you know a tip of the cap, if you will, uh, to the Negro Leagues, and they had the Negro League Museum there in Kansas City, Mo. So, uh, and I guess a portion of this goes for that. I don't know uh, what that portion is, but I'm, here's to you. <laughs> it's to you, man. Thanks for doing good work. Right now, I just got some, uh, my outdoor fogger spray doesn't seem to be working. <laughs> I'm going to have to spray again. I'm going to have to go inside a minute. Uh, damn it. <laughs> oh. Right now, I've got some bratwurst. What I started to say before a bug landed on me. <laughs> I've got some bratwurst smoking. I had two Swiss-style brats left and two mango habanero. Uh, so they're smoking. I'm going to get them done. I'm going to wait a little bit, but I'm also going to smoke. I picked up a beautiful Wagyu ribeye, and I'm going to smoke that sucker a little bit later. I do want to be careful with that one, right? I mean, a Wagyu ribeye. I want to really serve that one rare. So, again, yeah, I want to I want to gently, gently, gently smoke that one. Yesterday, I smoked some, some brats, and I also smoked a couple of what they call a beast burger. Uh, which is a combination of Wagyu, I think they said Wagyu, bison, elk, and wild boar. And I can't remember if they said venison was in there or not. They were they were kind of you know, going back and forth what was in it themselves. <laughs> but anyway, uh, they, they were, so, well, actually, here's the problem, though, is I smoked both of them. Uh, but they were half-pound patties, and they were big patties. My wife and I actually just split one burger, so I've got one patty left. I also picked up two Wagyu patties, but I decided to put them in the freezer, and I'm not going to cook them this weekend because I, I, I really want to cook that steak. <laughs> that steak, I want to taste that steak. So anyway, that's next. Um, so happy Labor Day to all of you. Thank you, Union. <laughs> Thank you, Union. You know, the thing that made the... Our work lives better now since they've killed most of the unions. Our work lives have gotten worse again. We used to have benefits. Now most of us don't anymore. In all honesty, I've only worked one union job in my life. But I will say, for that, for a comparable position that's non-union, it did pay a lot more and the benefits were a lot better. Even though I paid union dues, I still made quite a bit more in that union position than I did the non-union for that for that big company. So unions do good work. I'm not going to say that there's not some corrupt out there, unfortunately, uh, but it doesn't mean you know we should negate the good that unions have done uh, over time. So. We wouldn't have weekends off, or most of us don't have weekends off anymore, but it wouldn't have come about if it weren't for unions. The 40-hour work week was brought to us by unions, and most of that has now gone away as, as some have decided to bust most unions or bust the most powerful unions. I certainly would like to see unions make a comeback and to see people become more important than money once again, but I'm not expecting it. I'm a bit of a dreamer. I ain't gonna... I'm a bit of a dreamer. Oh. Well, darn it. I was trying to see something and my tablet wasn't going to... Uh, my tablet wasn't cooperating with me. Anyway, uh, have a happy Labor Day, y'all. Uh, I, hope, I hope most of you have the day off, but I know a lot of folks don't. Because there are businesses open, right? I mean, if you're working retail, you're likely at work. If you work in a restaurant or a grocery store, yeah, most likely you're working today. I'm glad I'm not. I'm glad I got out of the retail business. I'm glad I'm able to rest, enjoy my smoker, enjoy my wife, enjoy my cats, and enjoy a little bit outside. I am Tom the Beer Whisperer, Beer Evangelist, Prolific Beer Drinker, Purveyor Wisdom Man. Around good guy, cheers.